Hi, I'm Ravanya. Hi, I'm Shreya. Hi, I'm Anand. Hi, I'm Karthik. Hi, I'm Josh. Hi, I'm Kashik. Hi, I'm Rashid. Hi, I'm Sanat. And we are the Ice Boss! Okay, so the problem that we tried to solve this FLL season is smoking bees to harvest honey from them is inhumane. And smoking is a process in which wood is placed into a machine and lit on fire. The burning wood um, produces smoke, which is then poured over the bees. This smoke that is poured over the bees does two things. The first is it blocks their pheromones, which is how they communicate with other bees. This is not good as it lowers their defenses and obviously they cannot communicate with each other. And also it makes them very lethargic as they believe that a fire is going on and they eat their honey to preserve it. The honey makes them get tired. The honey makes them get tired. So after online research, we came across two problems involving bees. CCD, which has its own causes and um, may have multiple of them with no official proven cause, and smoking with not multiple problems. So using this information, we chose smoking. So our mission was during the span of the alcohol season to create a non-intrusive beehive system that removes this process of smoking. Um, so our solution is this beehive, the happy hive, which uh, removes the process of smoking with this big, with this um, different style of frame. And we also have a monitoring system in the back. All right, so now coming to the design of our prototype, the Happy Hive. The Happy Hive contains a monitoring system visible in the back, and there is a mesh frame that completely blocks off the monitoring system from the rest of the hive, where the bees are. Then at the front, there's a door which opens with a latch, and this reveals the back side of the frame. On one side of the frame, there's, it's open, and the back side has a silicone sheet. The frame has openings so that bees can fly in and fill in each individual comb with their own honey. Then when they're done, they cap it off with their own wax. When a beekeeper wants to harvest honey from the hive, they can simply peel off the dew log attaching the surface of the silicone to the frame, and it will expose the back side of the frame, allowing the honey to flow out. Because in the frame, honey is actually a lot less viscous than it is in a jar. The, the honey will flow down this metal sheet and into a jar at the bottom. Typically, uh, beekeepers have to take the frame out of the hive and spin in a centrifuge to harvest honey. By never having to remove the frame in the first place, the process of smoking is completely eliminated. So right now, if a beekeeper wants to check up on the bees or get honey, they have to go through this tedious process of smoking. In an effort to solve this, we've implemented a monitoring system which contains a temperature sensor and a microphone. So what the temperature sensor does is it measures the ambient temperature of the hive. This temperature is then compared with a graph of real-life data from a beehive that is healthy. So then it'll send that data back to the beekeeper so they can check on the smartphone or their laptop whether the hive is doing well or not. What the microphone does is it takes the audio from the bees and then compares that audio to certain sound signatures that occur when the bees do something in the hive. For example, if the queen bee flies out of the hive, there will be a certain unique sound that comes out from the bees. This sound signatures tell the beekeeper exactly what is going on and will show up on their smartphone. So over here we have two graphs based off of real data. And the first one is a temperature graph shown in Celsius, and the second one is the amount of bees inside a hive measured in pounds. So the first correlation we see is between the time of day and the number of bees inside a hive. So at the beginning of the day, since the bees, do, the bees go out to pollinate, which is why the temperature drops, and at the end of the day, it spikes because they all come back in to conserve heat. This can also be shown more specifically in this graph, where at 8.30, it's at max weight. The second correlation we see is between in the seasons. So December to um, January is not bee season, and it's winter, so they're not pollinating. But once it hits February, which is bee season, um, as you can see, there are many drastic changes where bees come and in, a, come in and out of the hive. So we shared this with the three beekeepers, Stefan Carpentier, Mark Patterson, and Corey Majewski. We also shared this with our Science Olympiad team and the mentor our mentoring team, the FRC Firebot, another, another neighboring team, the FLL Junior Bar, uh, Junior Firebot, and lastly, a teacher who's from a, a background in a beekeeping family. And so in conclusion, we were successfully able to design and build our, our version of our beehive, our happy hive. And our happy hive is successfully eliminates the process of smoking and benefits both the beekeepers and bees. And during the span of our FLL season, we learned a lot about bees' role in the ecosystem, the beekeepers' feelings towards the bees, and the process of collecting honey. And we also got a lot of good feedback based on our happy hive and even implemented one, our monitoring system. Lastly, we had lots of fun. Yay! Live happy, be happy!
Tetapi hai.